So if you're planning to buy an electric vehicle, there might be some questions on your mind. We decided to put together some of the most frequently asked questions in one place and answer all of them for you. It's not at all that different. If you know how to drive a car and you know how to drive an automatic transmission equipped car, you will adapt to an EV fairly quickly. The difference is that there is no conventional engine or gearbox making all of that noise that you're used to, so you end up noticing a lot of the outside noises that you don't because they get cancelled out in a conventional car with the engine and transmission noise. depends on the car that you're buying, the make and model of it, the battery size of it and the intent for which it is made for. Usually there are three ways to charge a car. There is a DC fast charger which you can usually find at the service stations or the dealerships of the automaker that you brought the electric vehicle from. You've got the regular home charging socket which takes a very long time to charge the car but it's meant for emergency situations. Then you've also got the complimentary charger that automakers provide that takes about 8 to 10 hours to charge up your electric car which can be done overnight. This was a very big concern a few years ago, but now it's not so much. You see, before automakers said they want electric charging stations in order to be making electric cars and the government said that there needs to be electric cars for them to make electric charging stations. And it was a chicken and egg story. Now, however, things have changed. If you buy yourself an electric car, chances are that the automaker will be giving you a complimentary charger as well. It does not take that long to charge from the charger that you have. And since you have that, you're not really dependent on the charging infrastructure. It depends on the make and model of your car and the purpose it is meant for, like I mentioned earlier. Now to give you an idea, let's take some of the examples that you have on the Indian roads. You've got the Tata Nexon EV that claims a range of about 312 kilometers on a full charge. You've got MGZS EV that claims about 419 kilometers with the 2021 model. You've got the Hyundai Kona that claims about 450 kilometers. And you also have the Mercedes-Benz EQC, which also claims about 450 kilometers on a full charge. not entirely impossible. You see, uh, it requires a lot more research and dedication planning your road trip if you're going in an electric vehicle because you have to make sure that there is a charging station at your end destination where you can leave the car on charge overnight and have a full range on your disposal and also you have some charging stations in between. Usually if your car is offering about 300-350 kilometers on a full charge, you will be leaving on a full charge from your house. So your end destination has to be somewhere about 3-350 kilometers without any charging point in the middle. But these days there are a lot of charging points that have popped up on major highways across India. So you just need to plan it out properly. If you can do that, you can go for road trips as well. Well, you won't really be finding yourself in this situation quite often because, let's be honest, you won't be waiting for your car's battery to go down to completely 0% and it dying off before you think of charging it. But if you happen to find yourself in this situation, almost all automakers are offering services where they send a recovery vehicle to your location and that recovery vehicle will charge your car and give you that juice required to reach the nearest charging station. Well, at this time, the concept of electric vehicles is still fairly new. So I don't have a specific percentage that I can tell you that it's X percent uh, lower than a combustion engine vehicle car, but it is lower for sure. And that is due to the design of the electric vehicle. You see, it does have a lot less moving part. It doesn't have a clutch. It doesn't require that much fluids to run. There's just less things to go wrong. As a result, your maintenance cost is lower than a combustion vehicle. 